Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So guys, respect. We all know the Aretha Franklin song. If not, find somewhere online that will play it. And uh, listen, it is a great old school classic. But guys, I'm starting to see in disability and on the internet, people don't seem to understand what respect is. And especially guys, going to narrow it down in support work. So guys, respect works both ways. Re you need to respect your support workers. So how do you respect your support workers? So doing what they ask. If it's a reasonable request to get up, go to bed, turn the TV off, stop an activity, you're heading out. Working with that having a good relationship with them or if you don't gel with that person speaking up and you don't have to be buddy buddy with everyone especially if you're in a cell house um sda skilled nursing facility or have a live-in caregiver guys and this is the thing so respect is respecting yourself and um, guys respecting others is a part of respecting yourself and guys one of those things is respecting time space abilities resources i'm seeing that there are some people who take advantage of support workers support coordinators and other admin staff within the ndis guys if you are higher functioning or if you have children with a disability, you need to respect them and other stuff by picking up the phone. If a support worker hasn't got back to you, if a support coordinator hasn't got back to you, pick up the phone, send them a text, send them an email. Hey, what's happening with change of circumstances, administrative review, rostering, assistive tech? I'm seeing a lot of people who will make one phone call in January think that's all they have to do. The other thing is parental responsibility. Yes, you have a child with a disability. Guess what? It's a child. Child is the first word there. You need to parent that child as well. Um, guys, going to do a whole other video on this one of support worker in the mean girls culture. So... I'm seeing a lot of the day in the life videos, which are great. But why are we attacking other support workers for the language they're using? For being on technology? We don't know the full story, especially if they're in public. Um, I know Deb and I did the video of what had happened on a shift with her daughter that day. And someone comes up and attacks her when she's doing notes in public. So they might be doing notes, they might be looking something up. Why do we always go to, oh, they're on social media? And uh, people seem to be so quick to bloody judge as well. Then the next thing is respecting a support worker's time. So when they're trying to get out the door, if you're a fellow support worker, being there at least on time or five minutes early and people are saying, oh, that's wage theft. I'm going to drive in on that exact time. <sighs> that is a tricky topic. But when you clock in is when you're ready to start working with that client. No if, no buts, no maybes as well. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing is different support workers are employed for different roles. So why are we being mean to those people when they probably have an entirely different skill set as well? So guys, that is where respect lies for me. Um, then respecting people that may not want to be filmed. They may not want to do something. They may not know how to do something. So instead of shaming them, teaching them 
so many people will go straight to the shame, not to the teaching. Uh, that, to me, is a shame as well. And then, for a support worker, got to respect that the client actually may be more educated than you. That's, guys, this is in my comment section, and I have left it there. There's someone saying that, as a higher functioning client, I actually don't have any authority as a support worker. Um, actually, as a higher functioning client, I do. And I've had to work through a lot of internalised ableism to even accept help. Yes, there is some times, as I said in the respite video, where I realised I was using it as an excuse. But isn't it better to ask for help and have that safety net them to stuff things up completely as well and then support workers need to respect clients autonomy their skill level their privacy their right to make decisions for themselves and being able to teach them how to make good decisions as well and the other thing that I want to talk about is the whole infantilization in the media so guys we're seeing legacy media particularly the project i'm finding it's the project who are doing hit pieces on people with a disability telling us where we should and shouldn't be spending our funds but we're not taxpayers i have worked there are things called supported workshops for uh, guys for every dollar that is spent on the NDIS, five dollars is put into the economy. I don't think the project seems to understand the difference between long-term investments and the NDIS as a long-term investment versus a short-term investment. And a short-term investment is one to two years and you expect a quick return as well. Then the other thing is telling us that we can't spend that on sex workers. Guys, um, there has been so many cases of female support workers getting attacked that the only sensible solution to teach them consent, to teach them boundaries, was to have a sex worker. Sex workers... Um, are very highly trained and skilled what they do sometimes it's about that intimacy i heard it really well put of for some sex workers they are actually a trained sexologist so it's no different to seeing a psychologist but they just happen to be wearing underwear so guys this is where we need to respect disabled adults are adults some might have the mentality and the adjusted age of a child they are going to need extra support extra guidance extra safeguarding not down in that but higher functioning people it seems to be a oppression olympics uh, this is the other thing i'm seeing people posting of their sicknesses around winter telling us to stay at home Fair enough, we need to be responsible and stay at home. But what if we don't have the opportunity? What if we can't afford grocery deliveries? What if we're heading out to the doctors? What if we're heading out to the chemist? Diseases and viruses can be airborne. They can be on surfaces. So this is where I'm trying to work within myself and get the message out about responsibility. Where has responsibility and personal accountability bloody gone? We seem to have want to blame someone and not own our shit. And the other thing is some, not saying all, some support workers don't want to own their shit. But I would prefer someone owning their shit and saying that they have stuffed up, they've made a mistake, they've had near miss and be able to learn from that than covering it up and guys i have seen cover-ups 
that have put people in danger. Whether that be a medication VMS, whether that be not giving the medication as well. So guys, medication is a huge issue. So if you can partner with a local pharmacist, whether that be a chain store, independent pharmacy, someone who delivers as always a bonus as well. So guys, that is something where I see that support workers really need to focus on medication and knowing what the disabilities are. And the other one is, are we pathologizing life? Saw a TikTok when I was winding down from volunteering last night that someone was saying, oh, it's impossible to get on Deadlink DSP uh, NDIS for mental illness. Some mental illnesses are automatic acceptance for DSP and NDIS. But as we have moved on from our understanding of what a disability is and what a mental illness is, and the explosion of mental illnesses, one question I have, and maybe I'm not educated enough, is are we pathologizing normal life? Are we pathologizing personal growth? Because guess what? Not everything is a mental illness. And what the best treatment is for mental illness they're seeing these days is actually to encourage that person to confront their fears. So literally exposure therapy. So if you have anxiety, that's working through that anxiety with mindfulness, with a counsellor, maybe with some medication, getting a job, starting a business. That job doesn't have to be someone talking to people. It can be working from home. It can be data entry. There's plenty of free online learning platforms that you can do to skill yourself, both accredited and unaccredited. There is also what people call and psychologists are calling, no joke, shitty life syndrome. You know what the best cure for this is? What they say is actually improving your life. And people are saying, oh, but I can't improve my life. Okay, pick up a Dr. Jordan Peterson book. Pick up a um, thing in Ramsey book, Dave Ramsey's book. Start putting those things in together. Can you clean your room? Oh, I don't have enough money to pay the bills. Can you go down to Centrelink, a church, a mosque, a charity? Work out a budget. Learning how to cook. Getting those life skills to be able to improve your life. I'm not saying that these mental illnesses aren't real. I live next door to someone who has got a terrible mental illness that causes behaviours of concern. I see how very real it is. But I'm kind of like, everyone wants the government or the NDIS to fix their problems. What about the community resources and the things that you can do yourself as well? Oh, I can't afford a psychologist. Plenty of YouTubers are promoting better help. Quite an affordable way to do it. Could you go and pastoral care is another option as well. Okay, I don't have food in the fridge. Can you go to a church, a food bank? Asking for help is the first step. Oh, I'm so tired. Okay. Can you keep a food diary? Work out what's causing that tiredness. Do you need to go and get tested for sleep apnea as well? So working through what those things are. And guys, by taking accountability for your life, I have found when I admit that I'm wrong, especially in with people in my personal life, when I aim for goals, and hit those goals, you feel so much better. Oh, people aren't willing to aim at something because, oh, what if they're about? Well, you learn what you can and can't do. You fix the goal, you adjust the goal. 
Okay, I want a job. I can't get a job. Okay, are you going to go and do some study? Are you going to do some volunteering? And guys, that's the big thing. People are like, I'm not going to work for free. Unplayed pace, I'm seeing that there's placement grants coming through for professionals. Absolutely amazing because placement poverty is a very, very, very real thing. But, guys, no one's going to start out on 30 bucks an hour or even more. The way I worked in, walked into my first job was doing unpaid work experience. The way I walked into my second job, unpaid work experience. There's only one job that I've actually applied for online. No, two. Had an interview and walked straight into. So that's the thing. You've got to be able to put that seed in. So that unpaid work to get the experience as well. And I think social media, particularly TikTok, YouTube, I think we're able to do longer form content. We're able to discuss it. But I think TikTok with the 10 minutes and the 60 minutes doing like the day in my life compilation, it's giving people a very false view of life, of reality. Guys, that's seeing someone's highlight reel. It's not seeing the shittiness. It's not seeing when you can't get out of bed. It's not seeing when a support worker needs to shower you as well. Because... There is so much nuance to living with a disability as well. And guys, I know that there are some amazing support workers, amazing support coordinators, amazing LACs out there, both online and offline. But we need to take responsibility for our actions. Um, that might be saying sorry. That might be admitting that you have a too big of a caseload. That might be releasing someone with complex needs into someone else's care. And people are going to say, oh, but there's liability issues. Guys, there's more liability issues if you don't own up to it. So, guys, if you've made it this far, if you can like, share, subscribe, comment as well. Uh, guys, I finally have a date for recording with a community pharmacist who I would like to think is a colleague of mine. So, guys, I will see you in the next video.